Hello, I'm Daniela, and welcome to the second prompt in the Stitch With Me in 2023 online workshop. This is a great workshop that lasts the entire length of the year with one prompt each month. It's a theme or an idea for the month, and you come up with a way to create it into your own little slow stitching book. Previous videos are linked below, and you could start this workshop at any time during the year. You don't have to start it in order. You can pick and choose which prompts you use, and of course, you can modify the prompts to suit your taste and style. Today's prompt is map, and you can use it as a subject or a verb or any way that you see fit. You can even take the word map and use it differently. It's really up to you. I'll show you how I use my process today, creating a treasure map. I use the stem stitch, the bullion stitch, and the split stitch, along with some basic running stitches and back stitches. It's a fun process, and if you'd like to learn those stitches and see my process, stay tuned. So now for this prompt, map or mapping, whichever you want to use, I really struggled with this one. I had so many ideas. I wanted to maybe map out my vegetable garden, which I thought would be fun, or maybe map out my neighborhood. So I had all these ideas going, but ultimately I decided on making an old vintage map, kind of like a treasure map. So I have my card, and that just gives me the size that I need for my background. Then I just have a piece of muslin here, just as my backing piece. It's not really gonna be a main player um, aesthetically, it just really supports my piece. So now I wanna create that map. Knowing that it has to fit on that little piece here, I stained some fabric here. This was just some kind of a light beige fabric. You can see it's a little mottled. That was the basic design, but I just left it overnight in some heavy tea solution. And then I rinsed it out. When I rinsed it out, a lot of the stain left, but I was left with this. It's not a permanent stain. Um, it might be a permanent stain, but it's not treated with a mordant or anything. So it's not anything that you'd run through a wash and expect it to maintain its color, but it does its purpose for these slow stitching projects, which is why I love the tea staining. Plus you can get so many different colors based on the tea and all that. So I'm gonna start by just cutting out my map and I want it to look very ragged and old. And because it's fabric, I'll just pull the sides a little here, some of these strands. I like the way that's coming along already. And I think I'm gonna put it on my backing a little off center, just a little off tilt here. And then I wanna kind of sketch out the elements to my map, the things that will make it really a treasure map. So I have my Frixian pen, just a pen that with any heat, like from an iron, it will remove. And now I'll just make my shape here. I wanna make it look like an island, I think. So I just kind of sketch an island, maybe with some coves. Just kind of an irregular shape. And now I need little elements on the island. I think I'll make some mountains here. And hmm, maybe a little lake maybe a river coming down from that mountain, and maybe some trees. They'll do palm trees. It'll be a little tropical island. And now I need my little dashed lines that indicate the path he would take. So I'll just have them go around the trees, around the mountains, and maybe X marks the spot over here. You can modify this. And I'll just go over that outline again, changing it somewhat now that I've added in my elements inside here. I'll have that river come all the way. All right, so the first thing I wanna do is stitch that outline I'm going to use my black pearl thread for that. It's just a simple thread. And I'm going to use a back stitch. And I'm going to try and keep the stitches small and really make that outline to that island. 
can use any type of stitch you want. I want it to look like a line, which will really contrast with my little um, stitches that I want to make to look like the path I'm supposed to take. So I'll just stitch all the way around the island and show you what it looks like. So I stitched the outline of my little tropical island here for my map. And here's the back. You can see where I had to attach different pieces just to complete that shape. So now I want to start adding different elements to make this really come alive. I think I'm going to start with the palm trees. I have this beautiful color 918 DMC floss in the brown and I'm just going to make the stems here. So I'm just going to do a simple little split stitch where I just come up so I'm just going to make one stitch, very small stitch, and then I'm going to come up and split that stitch in half, approximately in half with my needle, coming right through that stitch. And then I'll make a second stitch. And then I'll just do this on all the areas where I have these little palm trees, where I want to make the little trunks. Make a little stitch, and then split that stitch and make a second stitch. If I was going to make these trunks taller, I would just continue with that. And I'm going to have another tree over here. So now I'll stitch this third tree over here. I'll knot off my thread on the back making a loop and pulling it snug. So now before I work on the palm fronds, what I want to do is stitch those mountains. So I have some other brown. This is a much cooler brown without any red in it, an 801 from DMC. And I have my needle already threaded. And I'm just going to make a simple triangle shape. So I'm going to start here on one side of the mountain, come down where I want the other end of that triangle to be, and then put my needle up here so I can catch it. Move all this fabric out of the way, and just tack it down and I can pull that nice and snug. And I'll do that on the remaining mountains where I come up at the bottom of one mountain, go in at the base of the other side of that same mountain, and then stitch right at the top, the peak, and stitch it down. And I'll do this all the way around for this little mountain range. So now I think I want to work on adding my little river and I have a lake here. This is a beautiful blue color, a 964 from DMC. So I'm going to start with my river and I'm going to work on the stem stitch here because the stem stitch gives a beautiful curve. So I'm going to come right from the base of one of these mountains and then I'll make a stitch and I'll pull the loop but I'm not going to close it just yet and I'm going to stitch in between where I have the loop and then gently pull it. And now I'll make another stitch creating that loop and stitching in between those areas. I want to make sure that I always keep my loop on the same side so this way on the right. You can keep your loop on the left if you prefer, but just always be consistent. And now I'll just make a few more stitches and bring this little river 
right to the end of this island. Because I want the river to fork, I'm going to come up here as well and continue this stitching. So I'll just start anew with my loop, coming up in between the loop. So this is like the split stitch, but you're not splitting your thread. You're just stitching in between before you pull your thread down. They give little different results, but they can create, but you create beautiful curves with them. The split stitch tends to look like a little braid, whereas this looks just like a little um, twisted rope. As you can see here, I didn't stay true to keeping the loop on the left side. So to remedy that, I just come up on the other side of it. Now I just want to continue to keep my loop on the right side here. So there I have my little river completed. I have a little lake in here. I made it a little larger. So I'm just going to kind of create that design again. And now I'm going to stitch that lake. I'm going to just use a satin stitch. Now with a satin stitch, you want to stitch around it first and then fill it in. So I'm just going to stitch with a little back stitch just the shape of this lake the furthest perimeter that I have here. Now because it's such a small piece, it's almost filling in the lake as we go. But we're going to really neaten it up with that satin stitch on top. So we have that lake, just that perimeter shape, and now I'm going to start at one end. I'm going to come up and bring my stitch down, covering up the entire perimeter. Come up on one end, come down on the other, and now I'm just making parallel lines, the entire shape and size of this lake. Again, I come up from one side and go to the other, and I want to keep my stitches touching each other. You can see it start to develop that beautiful filled in shape. So there I have my river and my little lake. I'm going to knot it on the back. So now to make the palm fronds, I have this beautiful green thread, 3347 from DMC, but I only have four strands of it. I don't want it to be as thick as the mountains. So I'm going to start by stitching my needle, taking it and coming up from the top of the palm tree going down to the base of where I want the end of that palm frond to be and just pulling through but not all the way. I want to leave a nice loop here. And then I'm going to come up to that area where I first went in right at the top of the palm tree and I just leave my needle exposed a little bit. I'm going to take that loop that we left and wrap it around the needle a number of times and I want to wrap it enough so that it has the distance when I push down all those loops to get to that area. So now that I have that, I can pull my needle up gently
continue to pull it while I'm holding it with my left hand. And I have this very interesting little shape. I can pull it further. And now I want to just stitch it down into place. And I have one little palm frond. I'll do another one with that same procedure. I stitch my needle in. I bring my needle down to where I want the end of the palm frond to be, still leaving that loop. And then I want to bring my needle up the top of my original stitch. And with my thread loop, I just wrap around the needle a number of times to get that bullion knot. Hold the needle and the loops with my thumb and index finger and gently pull through all that thread. Again, I just kind of tease it into place, going gently, and then I stitch it down. And I'll do one more for this palm tree. So I'm starting at the top, I'm going to make a shorter little frond, come up from the top again, turning this around just to make it easier to see, make my loops four or five, maybe six, gently pull that all through the needle. And then I can attach my palm tree down, my little palm frond down. So I'll do that for the remaining two trees. Now when you're doing bullion knots, one thing to remember is the shape of your needle is very important. So ideally for the bullion stitch, if you're having trouble, you might want to just check your needle. The ideal needle for a bullion stitch is the milliner's needle, and that's because the eye of the needle and the stem here are fairly close together in size, which allows you to pull that knot off successfully. So if you can't find a milliner's needle, look through your supply to see what needle you have that has the smallest eye. See how this one bellows out a little bit? And these two are a little bit more sleek. So those are the needles you want to use for your bullion knots. So I have all my little palm fronds done. I'm very happy with it. Now just to finish up my little treasure map here, I want to make a red X. X marks the spot. That's what I'm going for here. Just have six strands of embroidery floss on my needle. I'm just going to make a simple X, just like a little cross stitch. like that. It's pretty simple, cute. Might even do one more strand over here just to really emphasize it. I'm very happy with that. So I'll knot this off and then I can start my little footsteps, my little path. So I have some black pearl and I'm going to start right here, the beginning, and I'm just going to make a running stitch I don't want it to be as close together as my back stitch stitches, but I still want it to be obvious that it's a path. So I just want to keep them in line and follow this little path that I sketched out. Can even change it up a little depending on what I'm seeing here. to go in between the palm tree and the mountains and go around the base of the mountains here. And then I cut it pretty close with the mountains on this side and the end of the island, but there's room to stitch in between it. And I'll come right over here behind the tree. 
kind of a cute little touch. And there I have a cute little map. And then I'll knot this off and see if there's anything I'd like to add to my piece. So I have a hot iron. I'm just going to press it over here to remove any of those pen marks that remain. So now when looking at my map, I like the way it came out, but I want the ends of it to have a little more body. So I have these little bamboo skewers that I cut up, and I think I'm just going to glue them back behind the piece, just to give it a little bit of a little rung there. I can even roll the piece into that skewer if I wanted, so I'll test that out. That's kind of a cute effect. Yeah, I kind of like that. So I'm just going to take my bamboo skewers and a little bit of fabric glue. So I'll put a little bit of glue on that skewer and then just wrap it around my fabric. Can always add a little stitch to hold it in place. And I think that looks good. I'll do the same thing with this piece. And therefore, it looks like a little scroll of a map. Gives another effect. I'm really pleased with that. I'll stitch it to my card and then it will be complete. So I stitched it to the card, decided to add a little text, and now I can add it back to my little box that has my January prompt. On the back, I'll write February and the theme. So that's prompt two in the Stitch With Me 2023 online workshop. We have a Facebook group and I'll link that below where you can post your designs. It's a great supportive environment with other stitchers who post their work and share their comments you know, and all their questions as well. If you enjoyed today's video, please be sure to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. Thanks for joining me today.